Hello, I'm Tony Guida. This is my New York. The longest working cartoonist in history just turned 100 years old. Al Jaffe. He retired last year after 79 years in the business, 64 of them as one of the usual gang of idiots at Mad Magazine. He's best known as the creator of Mad's iconic fold-ins and the series' snappy answers to stupid questions. One ardent admirer said that series helped shape his career. As a child, yes, a child, Al Jaffe, you corrupted me with your snappy answers to stupid questions, and I have now made a lifetime and a pretty damn good living being both snappy and stupid. Meet Al Jaffe next. Al Jaffe, it is an honor to have you on my program, and I am delighted to be able to wish you happy birthday. Welcome, Al. Thank you very, very much. You know, uh, I understand you you started drawing at a very young age. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit, how you discovered that talent and what you wanted to do with it. Well, uh, uh... My mother took me and my brothers to Lithuania for what was supposed to be just a short visit to her father's house. But we wound up being there for over a year. And my brother and I couldn't figure out what to do. We couldn't find anybody to play baseball. So uh, we decided. You were, you were how, how old were you at this point? At this point, I was, uh, let's see, uh, eight. Yeah. And I mean, you, you were uprooted from, from the United States, and all of a sudden you're plopped down in, in a little town in Lithuania where nobody spoke English, That's and you had, no fr you had no friends. So mm -hmm. it, 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 that was a, quite an upheaval in your life. Yes, it was. And the, uh, the only way we could uh, attract local kids as friends was our ability to draw. My brother was an excellent artist. And of course, I've drawn all my life. I, you know, I, uh, I just was, we were born with it. Uh-huh. And uh, the kids in uh, Zarasai, Lithuania, were so impressed that they made local heroes out of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I, I, I think I read that it, it was actually six years you were there. Uh, Overall. Yeah. And um, so you're drawing and you become, you become uh, famous in the town with the other kids because of this, this uh, talent you had. That's great. Um, did you, did, so, the, so, the drawing, so the drawing was kind of a coping me mechanism to get through this, this kind of upheaval. Yes, it was. And it, it had more importance than just the drawing. We were required to study for uh, our bar mitzvahs. Uh -huh. that, and then my brother and I started drawing pictures of, the, of Noah's Ark and all the exciting stuff that was in the Bible. And we, we had a wonderful time. And, uh, and when we went to the synagogue, we marched around the bima showing our our version of holiday time so it, it, it was it was important to be accepted mm. by the local kids and this made us heroes and uh, it was great fun I read a story, Al, that uh, at one point, while you're in Lithuania with mom, 
uh, your dad is in the United States. It, there was a story that I read that uh, you you wrote to him or called him and said, send me the funny papers, send me the comics, or I'll never talk to you again. <laughs> is, that, is, is that true? It's essentially true. I mean, I, I don't, I don't recall the threat, but I pleaded for the comics, and uh, what I was, we were all born in Savannah, Georgia, and one of the great uh, experiences was my father bringing home all the papers that carried the Sunday funnies and and the dailies and so on. So my brothers and I, <clears throat> we, we just sat on the floor and read comics and then started drawing them. Hmm. Uh, well, I, I was going to ask you, we were talking about you've been drawing all your life and you, you were born with it. Where does the comic gene come in? When, when do you discover, is that because of the comics? Well, yes, I guess it is because a lot of the comics were entertainingly funny, especially things like uh, Mickey Mouse and uh, A Little Orphan Annie. Uh, they all had special qualities that we uh, enlarged on. I mean, if Little uh, Orphan Annie was uh, having a certain problem, we solved it. Ah, you did your own. You did your own strip with you know fixing whatever was wrong there. We did. A, yes, we did a couple of weeks running uh, that solved the situation and what? got got her out of trouble. You finally get back to the United States and you're enrolled at the uh, High School of, of Music and Art, right? That's correct. And that was a real uh, important place, not only for what you started to develop as your talent, but for the people you met there. Let's talk, oh. about, let's talk about that. Oh, it was, it, it was probably the most fortunate turning point in my life. Hmm. The, the people I met there, uh, one of them created Mad Magazine. That was Harvey Kurtzman, right? Harvey Kurtzman and Will Elder. And uh, there were so many more. Uh, many of them went on to become uh, fine artists. Did you, uh, at this point, knowing these people, think, hey, I, these are guys I want to work with. This, this is something I want to I wanna do. I didn't have time to think of that because I was turning out massive amounts of comic book material. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked for Stan Lee, who uh, gave me the freedom to write and illustrate my own comic books. And uh, that was great fun, but it was, it, it was a constant work. You talk about a legend. You're a legend. Stan Lee was a legend. What was it like to work with him? Oh, Stan Lee uh, uh, and I met earlier early in both of our careers. And uh, Stan somehow uh, took a liking to my work and uh, gave me a lot of freedom to write and illustrate, which, which is uh, in modern comic books is somewhat unusual because the, the demands are so great that for both writing and drawing that you have to specialize in one or the other to make it. 
-hmm. but but Stan paid me double, and uh, I wound up <clears throat> creating my own material and drawing it. There was so I had a very good relationship with Timely Comics. And how does it, how do you wind up uh, arriving at Mad Magazine? When Harvey went to Bill Gaines with this idea, crazy idea for a magazine, Mad Magazine, uh, Gaines was also a gambler. So he decided to see what this kid could, could produce. And Harvey's work was so special. Uh, well, he, he tried to hire the bet, and uh, Will Elder was there, and Jack David, and uh, oh, so many. He found so many special uh, people that <clears throat> I think it's, it started a trend. I came in later, and I've, I've been there ever since. Yeah, you sure have. Um, <laughs> Your 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 relationship with Harvey, uh, I think, started well because it wasn't very long. If I'm not mistaken, it wasn't very long after your arrival at Mad that you came up with the uh, the thing that you're perhaps most famous for, the folded. Let's talk about the folded. Okay, uh, I was. I was sitting with the editors, Harvey and others, and uh, we were trying to figure out a direction that we could go in. And uh, they said, if you could come up with something startlingly new and exciting, uh, it, you know, it'd be a wonderful feature. So when I got home, I threw all the magazines that I had that carried humor uh, in, in the form of cart uh, illustration cartoons like Playboy and uh, Playboy's copiers and. I opened them up on the living room floor and I, I looked at them and I said, well, how can I, how can I top all of these guys? It's ridiculous. I mm -hmm. mean, there's enough of them. So, uh, but I'd like to get one thing out of it. And I decided, I, I looked at Playboy and it had Playmate of the month, right? Which was a fold out. Yes. So, Mad was kind of going and and uh, was on a roll with going the opposite way. So I said, "Well, they're going to do folds out. Mad should do a fold in." So I tried it, <laughs> and the and the reason it worked is because it had the the classic element that humor needs, which is the setup and the punchline. Exactly. The, the setup is the drawing in front of you, and then you read the caption and you fold it, and it's a different picture with the punchline. So that went over very quickly. Well, it went over very quickly, and it was uh, it was in Mad Magazine in the last page, I think, for what fifty years. Um, yes. Uh, it's one thing to think these other magazines have a fold, fold out. I'll come up with a fold in, but it, it's got to take some kind of special genius to think. Oh well, when I do this fold in, what's going to happen is there'll be one cartoon, the, 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 the setup, as you call it. And then we'll have like dotted lines and we'll tell that's how they fold this thing. And it becomes another picture, right? 
I mean, right. that's that's pretty technical stuff. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> one of my passions throughout my life with my brothers was uh, making our own things. And we would draw, make intricate drawings of a little wagon or a sled or something like that and build it from, from our own plans. So- Actually build it. Actually build it, a, a model. Yeah. Uh, and just, uh, we built full-size sleds. Uh, they, those were easy to build because, you know, it's just a platform. The excitement of seeing something that you created yourself and that actually works uh, has sort of became a very strong guide for me and my brother Harry, who was an excellent artist. Mm -hmm. Let me before we get to your other great creation, the snappy answers to to stupid questions. I want I want you to talk about the magazine itself a little bit. Mad Magazine. It was. It was, um, it, it had great appeal to kids, young people, and adults at the same time. How did it accomplish that? You know, like parents, when they want to get their child to do something, they don't say, here's what you're going to do today, and don't you forget it. No, they say, I've got a great idea. We'll uh, <clears throat> read this funny little story, and then you'll make a drawing of it, or some other subterfuge. Well, <clears throat> uh, I think, you know, you, if you lead people down the primrose path and then uh, drop a punchline on them, uh, the, rea the reaction is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about your other wonderful creation for MAD, the snappy answers to stupid questions. And we all get asked stupid questions almost every day. Uh, you had the genius to turn that into a long-running series in MAD. How did you come up with that? The first time that it struck me, was I was standing on a corner next to a, a, a sign that was right at the curb that said bus stop. Mm -hmm. And someone walked up to me and said, does the bus stop here? <laughs> you know, so I said, well, of course, I, I wasn't a smart ass with the, the lady who asked me that. But the idea for a comic series was born. Snappy Answers became so popular, Jaffe occasionally was invited to perform the gags. I lived on Long Island for many, many years, and uh, periodically uh, the antenna would be blown over by a storm. Some of you may not remember what an antenna was, but we did have them, and it, they were attached to the chimney, and I'd have to borrow a ladder and climb up, though I'm terrified of heights, and try to straighten the antenna. One day I'm up there, and I hear footsteps on the ladder behind me, and the footsteps arrive closer, and it is my son's voice who says, where's mom? And, you know, I'm clinging for dear life, and I said, I've killed her, and I'm stuffing her down the chimney. <laughs> uh, two uh, benefits resulted from this. One was that I managed to create a number of books based on snappy answers. And the other was that my son stopped talking to me. <laughs> Turned out to be a gold mine. 
<laughs> that idea. Well, it's uh, it certainly supported me in a regal manner. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned before that you're 99, but you're about to be 100. And by the time by the time this tape is on the air, you will be 100. Uh, I, as I said at the beginning of the program, so delighted and honored to be able to wish you happy birthday. But 15 years ago, when you were 85, you got a pretty special greeting on your birthday from a fellow by the name of Stephen Colbert. You have repeatedly shown artistry and care of great credit to your field. But you know, there's a simpler way to say that. You remember that? I do remember it. I I was a guest on his program, and so uh, we became uh, f friendly, kidding each other. And uh, so when he heard about my birthday, I don't know who who told him about. Well, he has a lot of writers who uh, give him. Sure, sure. So. Uh, he was very nice uh, contacting me and uh, actually he was a, a very nice interviewer too. Uh, he, he didn't try to pull out embarrassing information. <laughs> he was like you. Well, I appreciate that. I'm going to, if I knew Stephen Colbert, I'd call him up and say, Al Jaffe says, I'm just like you. I just want to say that you are a wonderful interviewer, and I've enjoyed this time that I spent with you. Well, I've enjoyed it myself, Al. It is a delight to get to know you a little bit, and, uh, and I thank you for this. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. A few days after our chat, friends showered Al with stunning original cards, including this from Al's longtime colleague, Sergio Aragonis. Oh, me amigo. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful drawing. Oh. And this from award-winning illustrator Tom Richman. With greatest admiration. Wow. Admiration from Tom Richman. That's like admiration from God. Oh, my. Uh. No one admires Al Jaffe more than Sam Viviano, Al's art director for 19 years at MAD. Sam hit social media to alert the world that Al was turning 100, and the world bowled him over with its response. I was blown away. When I rented the post office box, I didn't really know quite what to expect. I hoped for a large response, but I didn't necessarily expect that we'd be hearing from people from Canada, the UK, Ireland, Sweden, Switzerland, Germany, France, uh, Australia, New Zealand, even a couple from Japan. Wow. How many at this point? Uh, at this point, I think we're up to around 435. It's hard to find Mad Magazine these days, mostly online. I understand they're planning another tribute to Al. They will have a birthday celebration, and uh, I know that it's accompanied by an illustration by Tom Richmond, who's been a longtime artist at Mad and a friend of Al's as well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it as much as anybody else. Anything you could tell us about that Richmond uh, drawing? Well, he did sneak a little bit of it online, and I know it, uh, it includes an illustration of Al blowing out a hundred candles. So. <laughs> that that's must be a great image. Al is a great image in and of himself. He's, he has always struck me as a kind of uh, leprechaun of sorts, uh, an elfin quality about him that's extremely endearing, and he hasn't lost that now at the age of 100. And what about that final fold in, which wasn't really the final one he drew, right? But but the one that appeared in the Mad Magazine edition that that saluted him, 
uh, you know, after he retired. So they not only ran the final fold in, but they had a, an entire special issue devoted to Al. The, the uh, drawing uh, sort of Al's goodbye to himself. Definitely. I mean, I, I laugh because Al's goodbye to himself is sort of what it was. I mean, it, I believe you know that Al uh, has the record as the cartoonist with the longest career in history. And it's something at like 75 years now. And for him to say goodbye to himself seems like an apt way to put it. Who better than Al Jaffe to bid farewell to his glorious career? And who better than Stephen Colbert to wish him well? Happy birthday, Al Jaffe. I assume that being 100 feels five times better than being 20. So I hope you're doing well today and every day. I know that I'm doing well because of you, because as a child, yes, a child, Al Jaffe, you corrupted me with your snappy answers to stupid questions. And I have now made a lifetime and a pretty damn good living being both snappy and stupid at the same time. So here's to you, you old silly fool. How about a hundred more? I love you, old man.